You know, when you look at when you look at uh, this knowledge based economy that you're referring to and really kind of tapping Nigeria into the, the second machine age, as you referred to it, uh, one of the issues that comes up is obviously the uh, the quality and access to education. Obviously, as a former minister of education, I know it's something you're passionate about. How exactly would you go about tackling that issue? When we, one of the major criticisms of, of President Buhari's administration has been inadequate funding of health and education uh, over the last three and a half years, more per, preferring to focus on infrastructure, et cetera. How would you balance that, the need to invest in education and the need also to invest in critical infrastructure, for example, with limited resources? Yes. So I need you to know that um, education is on the um, concurrent list. And so it is the responsibility of federal, state, and even local government. I also need you to know that the out-of-school children in Nigeria are growing right within the time of this administration. When I was Minister of Education, what I saw, what I met, was about 7.4 uh, a million out of school children. We did some major push together with the state governments, incentivizing access policies, work of state governments. By the time I was leaving, we had already reduced to about 6.7 million. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. There was some rate of progress. Now, instead of that progress, by ensuring continuous decline, we put our eyes off education, and now we have 13.5 million out-of-school children. I can tell you one thing. Everybody in Nigeria is worried about education, not just of their children, but of the children out of school because they are, they are the time bomb. 13.5 million is the equivalent of three countries' population around our sub-region. That is a lethal weapon waiting to knock this country even further down. So I would pay attention, serious attention, to the incentives that would make children show up in school. Everything that would incentivize the behavior of parents of those children. I would use role modeling. I would use evidence-based policies of things that have worked in other jurisdictions. I would do some of the things that we did previously uh, with the state governments. And we will make sure that by the time we are leaving office, that <laughs> Nigeria will no longer be the country with the largest number of out-of-school children. No, but you know, within kind of the education uh, you know, sector, we know that the weak link generally has been, like you said, the state governments. But the, 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 the issue now is about if states cannot pay basic salaries, pensions, for example, a report saying about uh, the 30 states either owe salaries or pensions out of 36. Uh, what, what is the answer then? Is there a special funding mechanism that could be put in place to assist the states in the area of education rescue? I mean, what do you have in mind there? So yes, you're right in, in what you've just described. And it takes me to the issue of the structural imbalance that we have in our country today. This structural imbalance, those who are politicians of the CMS Twins order are not interested in dealing with it. It's too hot to get into. You know, the, the administration before the current one had done this work through the Orosaye Committee, looking at cost of governance. What happened to it? No interest. They, kept, they not only kept a dysfunctional structure intact, but they helped to balloon it even more. My government will be very, <laughs> very decisive in having the conversation on the structural imbalance that's making government at the federal and state levels to just completely overwhelm and overrun every other thing. You can have a government, the size of government, arresting the development of the rest of the country. No, we have to discuss what functions will then define structure. We need to think of that. It's one, of, one of the major issues that has come up over time is when you look at the, the, the civil service, whether at the state level or the federal, that it's bloated, that people over decades bringing people on just for the sake of giving out jobs has now, like you've said, arrested development. How do you solve that problem without mass retrenchment, for example? Oh, there have been different countries that solved this, this 
problem. Um, and the way that they have solved it is to look at the, the civil service and those within it, not as extras that need to be offloaded, but they look at them as people with capacity that need to be re reignited on a different mm. path. There's a way to do it, and it's a wholesome way. But you know what? Our fiscal crisis is too dire for us to be nasal gazing on this matter. Dr. Obi, we're just going to take a very short break. Uh, we will be back in a moment. Thank Our you. Our viewers, please do stay with us. Welcome back to Sunrise Daily, coming to you live from our Abuja studio. I am speaking this morning with Dr. Obi Ezekwesili, who is a candidate for the Nigerian presidency on the platform of the Allied Congress Party of Nigeria. When we look at the, the, the potential for this election, what can happen, uh, how important is it to you that, uh, you know, we get an even platform for all aspirants on all party platforms, high and less known, uh, to rub minds and to share exactly what it is they have in store for the Nigerian public? Are you ready for that? And do you think that others are ready for that? The summary of all this grammar that you just speak, as I just spoke, eh, mm -hmm. is Buhari must vote. Uh, Buhari must uh, debate. <laughs> Buhari, President Buhari must debate. No proxies. We're not taking proxies. We're going to all line up and tell the people of Nigeria what we want to do. The situation is too critical for us to even be playing. We, we're not in this to play at all. The, the majority of young people and women that are the focus of our campaign, the Nigerian people and the old people who are crying and saying, I don't want to die without seeing a new Nigeria. They want the debate to happen. So nobody can escape debate in these elections. We want to stand up there and tell the people how we're going to fix the broken down walls of our nation. I know that that debate is going to be a masterstroke. Anybody who cares about Nigeria must line up to debate. If they run from debate, <laughs> run from them. In fact, already many people are running from them. You know, for me, the confidence that we can have is in the knowledge that mm. this is not about us. <laughs> it's a different, you know, somebody said to me, this is politics, and you'll be, you, know, you don't know anything with politics. And I simply said, I don't know anything about politics, but I know something about caring for people. Mm. And for me, that's enough. Uh, very quickly before we go, when you look at over the last three and a half years, what has transpired between the executive branch and the legislature, uh, the, how politics has gotten in the way of policy, how it's gotten in the way of the effective running of governance. How, what is your template? Can you, would you be able to, if you emerged as the next president, manage the politics of a national assembly that could be dominated by members of parties that are not the Allied Congress Party of Nigeria? How would you handle that? I would be running in Nigeria, right? So when you are a leader and you're running Nigeria, you lose yourself. The problem that we have is that these leaders don't lose themselves. They, they think that leadership means you're the Ogat Matak Matak. No, I would be running a Nigeria that must work. So it requires cohesion. It requires inclusivity. It requires inspiration. I will be inspiring people. It would be obvious to people that the only thing that matters to this woman who is not for turning is that this nation become the destined great nation mm. that it must be. So, In inspiring they will do everything that it will mm. take. Mm. They will come. They will, we, will, we will fight. Oh, we will fight. We will fight for the soul of Nigeria, no doubt. Mm. But we will agree that Nigeria is worth saving. That is a point that uh, is certainly worthy of concluding a worthwhile conversation. Madam, I thank you so much for coming on the program thank today. Thank you. Thank you, Ajuri. Thank I have you. been speaking with Go Dr. get your PVCs, though, because we, the citizens, are taking over. We're taking over. And that is the voice of Dr. Obi Ezekwesili, who is a presidential candidate on the platform of the Allied Congress Party of Nigeria, ACPN. At that, on that note, we close the show. Thank you for joining us, and I wish you a wonderful day ahead. I am Ajuri Ingalali. Yes, indeed. Now, what a way to start the week. That's the show as well. Thank you for watching. I'm Chamberlain Osa. The views and opinions expressed by guests on this program are those of the maker and do not necessarily reflect the views, opinions, and endorsement of Channels Television.